Barbecue and Hickey. Scissor me, Daddy! I want to scissor me to scissor me. Scissor me. What's up, wrestling fans? Hey, listen, guys. I was legit falling asleep. I was legit falling asleep watching Dynamite tonight. I don't know if that was Dynamite's fault or mine. I, I am so tired. I got to be dead honest with you guys. I have been dead tonight. I almost didn't come on, but I was like, dude, I got to come on. So, like, I had to do something to psych myself up and act like a maniac to basically knock myself out of the funk of, like, being ready to go to Betty Bye. And, uh... It's true that I'm a little bit messed up tonight because I'm really tired. But, you know, I thought the show... I thought the show was all right tonight. And, and, and like I feared, I think for some people... I think for some people it was just like, you know... People were so hyped about all the crazy backstage stuff that's going on. Like I said, I was worried about that. I was worried about people being like, damn... I want all this backstage stuff to start happening on the show, but that doesn't happen, and so people are a little bit thrown off. Uh, that ending was great with Orange Cassidy cutting a promo that was actually pretty good. You know, like, that was actually a really good promo to end the show tonight. I got to be honest, but I got to tell you, do too. Um, you know, not not a ton of substance tonight. Uh, the acclaimed with a great rap on their way to the ring again, pretty good rap uh, for the most part. Um, I I, I got to tell you guys. I'm seeing something in this poll that I've never seen before. Guys, I need you to look me dead in the eyes right now. This is the worst poll I've ever seen for AEW. I, I, I got to be honest, guys. I have been doing, I've been doing a poll for AEW Dynamite since, like, the beginning of Dynamite. And you can go back and watch all my Dynamite reviews every time we did a poll and we put the poll up at the end of the show. 75% of you guys give the show a thumbs up almost every time. There was one time, uh, a couple of times maybe, that I remember it was 50-50 almost. But almost every time the show gets about 55, 65, but usually 75 or above percent thumbs up. And, and usually it gets like a 14%, 15% amazing and like a 30, 40% good. At least that's normally around what we get, guys. I'm looking at this poll right now, and girls, I'm looking at this poll. This is one of the worst ratings. This is the worst rating of Dynamite ever to reach 200 votes. I have never, I have never seen terrible be the top leading thing on an AEW Dynamite poll on my channel ever. I'm not kidding about this. You can go back and watch all my Dynamite reviews. I've never seen this. I have seen Blah drop a 30% before. I've seen Blah drop a 30 and Good drop a 30 and Amazing drop a 15 and Terrible drop a 10 or a 5 or something like that. But, dude, I have never seen this bad of a rating of a Dynamite. And, honestly, I think a big part of it is the fact that people are waiting for good, crazy stuff to go down like I said, the hype of what's going on backstage is controlling, you know, what you want to see and how you're feeling and the churning up of the feelings and all that sort of stuff. And my God, bro, this is bizarre. I have never seen this. People are pissed. I don't know what that means exactly if it's a punk thing. I mean, I know punk's the number one talked about biggest draw in the company and all that sort of thing. But, man, this is so telling. It's kind of unbelievable, man. I, I actually am shocked by this. It, it, I did not expect... 
I expected to start kind of talking about some things on the show and to get into that thing, but this is is starting to really take over everything else. You know, it, uh, this is crazy. That uh, I am, um, I am shocked by that poll, man. That is, poof. I've got to get this poll. I got to get a screenshot of this poll. I can't believe this. This is without a doubt the worst. This is the worst rating I've ever seen. This is the worst rating of dynamite I have ever seen. I I, I am. Uh, I mean, I, I thought it was me. I thought I was sleepy, and, and because I was sleepy, I didn't like the show that much. Tonight, I thought I was maybe crazy, and I wasn't even going to rate it because I feel like I'm in an unfair mood right now. I really am. I feel like I'm in an unfair mood to judge this show, to rate the show, and whatever else. And quite honestly, guys, I apologize for the fact that I am dead tired. I, I almost didn't come on tonight, and I won't be on long because I am... I'm just run down. But um, we, we were getting messages all day from uh, Trump. He was attacking D. Welsh in the Discord. It was pretty crazy. Let me go over to the Discord right now and see what everybody's saying. Guys, if you want to donate and say your piece and say whatever you want, super chat down below or use the Streamlabs link pinned to the top of the chat. It's up there. Or it's in the description box down below, wh whichever way you find it. Uh, feel free to do it. The donations will pop up and, and whatever else. We'll see who's the top dono tonight. I don't know. Um, if there is one, uh, shout out to earlier when I was live, though, Ghost from the Coast was, uh, dropped a, a bombzo, bombs away. Let's go over to the, uh, to the Discord. The Discord is lit. Oh. Boys and girls. Daddy is here. I almost fell asleep. I almost didn't come on tonight. I literally almost turned everything off and said, I can't do it. Um, Dude, so. It was what? A piece of shit. Really? I can't believe the poll, guys. I'm shocked, dude. Look at this poll. Like, this is the worst rating I've ever seen Dynamite get. And it's funny. Like, just a couple weeks ago, I literally turned off my TV during that House of Horror, that Chainsaw Massacre match, whatever the hell it was called. And mm -hmm. I, I was I was able to get through this. But, I mean, I mean, again, I'm not saying this was the best Dynamite at all by any means. I was just saying, like, you know, I prefer the wrestling overall than the promo segments mostly and yeah i mean like i shoot this is a, this is a surprise I, to me i think what it was was that tonight you really it's like everybody's looking for an explanation or not an explanation but looking for a follow-up to this whole punk and jack perry thing and when you don't get that i mean it's it was the same thing with uh last year after a uh, brawl out or whatever the next AEW, everybody shat on it because it's like we all wanted a follow up to like the real shit that's going on, and you're not giving giving it us that. You're not giving it to us, so we're gonna shit on you. You know, yeah. like this isn't. But, but, but that, but this is what I was worried about earlier. As well, I was. I mean, worried about literally this. everybody's been saying this. Turn it into a storyline, or just just get rid of the guys if you're not gonna fucking do anything with them. Because at this point, it's so stupid. You have two fucking massive storylines that you're not going with, and you have a fucking pay per view literally <laughs> in a, a, like a few days. And you could utilize this very well for that pay per view, and to not do it is like it's and it, but it shows you that people are kind of bored. That people are kind of bored. Listen, the people that are there, you know, they're cheering and everything, or whatever. They're in Chicago, you know, they're they're gonna have as good a time as they can. They bought tickets. They're there. It's the people watching at home that are kind of unimpressed, it seems like. It seems like they yeah. should have they should have no sold it at first with Jack Perry. I know this might even be out of order or out of the norm, but have Jack Perry have a match early on, no sell it, don't even bring up CM Punk at all, have him win, and then at the end of the pay per view for the Chicago crowd, you have Jack Perry get jumped by CM Punk and say, I'll see you at all out or I'll see you on Saturday, and you sell the. Well, they're suspended the right now, so we can't get that at that's all. The that's, 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 that's the dumbest thing. So that's even That's real. That's the dumbest. Well, first of all, CM Punk isn't on Dynamite anymore, so everybody might need to hold their horses because if CM Punk. Well, that's retarded. Well, I, he, seriously though, he's not well, on Dynamite. Collision, he, collision when's the last time? Tonight, when's right? the last time Punk was on no. Dynamite? When's the last time Punk no, was on right. Dynamite? No, that's what I'm saying uh, though. It's retarded. It's collision exclusive. 
it's retarded that it this is. guy who's walking around with a fucking with supposedly the real world championship is only showing up on a fucking Saturday show that not as many people watch. And like, also, he's literally the biggest story right now, and they're not doing any with anything with him for the second time. That's why I think like the backlash for this one is so much harder. Because it's like, dude, come on. Seriously? You're doing this shit again? We're going to just pretend it didn't happen? And now it's like, and then, we don't even know We don't even know if, if the suspension rumors are true or not. And if that's the case, if he's really suspended, holy fucking shit. That but is that's what dumb. I'm saying. Let's just, let's just say that the rumor mill and innuendo saying that the suspension is a shoot. Let's just say that, right? We don't know how long it's for. And then also, by the time they come back, we don't know what the repercussions are in terms of what they can't do, what they can't say. And then all of a sudden, they may, you know, they might have a couple opening card matches for the next couple of weeks, maybe as punishment. We don't know what's going to happen. All right, let's let's wait. Let's wait and see um, what happens on you know, Saturday because he's supposedly going to show up at Collision. Because if he doesn't, which there's show a taping, up, yeah, because it's well, taping tonight. I, yeah, but t- looking at tonight, just tonight, right. without Punk, all of it tonight was a shit show. Except the main event, everything else was flat, boring, and did and led to nothing. Nothing. Um, I, I, I did. I, I, well, I like the pink belts. About it. Yeah. I was telling them that I like, I like the idea of it, you know, the scissor thing, but I don't know. Have, am I the only one who thinks those trios belts looks like they look like little toys or something or something that you would use in a backyard wrestling promotion? Yeah, like they don't. Terrible. Yeah. They, well, no, well, they, 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 they don't look, yeah. like, they look like WCW belts. They I, look like the WCW tag team titles from 92 or something. They are the bar. It's right just now. so weird because it's like AW has some of the best looking titles in the in the business now, and like some of the most dull and bland. Like I hate the TNT title, and same with the TBS title. I think they look shitty. But like that that AW International title is fucking gorgeous. Same with the world title and the women's world title and the tag team titles. But it's like it's so weird because then it's like you see somebody come out with this fucking gorgeous looking belt. And then you see Adam Cole walking around with the shitty fucking ROH tag team championship that looks like it's just on a big fucking slab yeah, of steel. Yeah, but you know what? Like it looks I'll so take deep. it. I'll take it because you know what? If they start making all the belts look amazing, then it's going to diminish all the – you know what I mean? Like, so fine. I'm glad the other ones kind of look no. light, lighter. Attitude Era had a had titles that all looked good. Ruthless no. Aggression Era the had titles belt. that all looked good. What about good. the hardcore belt? It looked like a, we got run over by a fucking – The hardcore – <laughs> the hardcore belt is a gimmick. That's the I gimmick know. of it. <laughs> yeah, the Barbie belts suck. I'll show up to an AEW show dressed up as a rock. I'll beat on I their ass and I'll say, Rock beat scissors, bitch. I wasn't too happy Ooh. with the Intercontinental title when they changed that in the Attitude Era. I didn't like the looks of that. True. Oh, true. I like I re- I like the oval look. The I, oval heard, belt I, heard, I actually did like that one too myself. I mean, I like yeah. it now in retrospect because it's like not as bad as the one now, but... It's like, I didn't like that. I remember thinking, what the fuck did they do to the Intercontinental belt back then? I was not happy. But now it's like... I think people are very... People are protective of that belt. If you if you change that belt, you know what I mean? It's like you're automatically kind of fucking sabotage the next championship you introduce. But the Oval yeah. belt... Yeah. Oval belt, I think, looked beautiful. And it, it fucking fits perfectly around anybody who wore it. Like Shelton Benjamin, Rey Mysterio... Fucking RVD, Chris Benoit, Jericho, Triple H. Like, everybody who held that belt, it looked like it was perfectly made for him. Uh, Jeff Hardy, Umaga. Like, it, the the belt just looks so fucking good, bro. I love that championship. The new one, the new one looks like it's devoid of any color. The like, new- it's a good-looking belt, but why would you get rid of the, of the fucking blue and green on the Intercontinental Championship? The new one looks yeah, like honestly, they uh, we... took some guy's drum set cymbals and that was all they had to work <laughs> with. They're like, here, put something I, I, together. Like, honestly, like I, I saw somebody do a – sorry. Go ahead, Luke. No, no, no. Go ahead, Luke. I saw, so, I saw somebody do like a um, like an edit, like a Photoshop of that belt, but they put color to it. And surprise, surprise, it actually looks really fucking good with color. Mm. I bet it does. I mean, yeah, honestly, do you think I think that I – when I first looked, sorry, my when I first looked at that IC belt, my first reaction was, "This is just a remix of the cruiserweight belt, except it's just a bland color." And even then, I look at the IC belt and I'm going, "It's devoid of any personality." Like when you look at a belt, 
it's supposed to really manifest that. going this is this is the division that not only i'm thriving in but i'm pretty much on the top of the mountain of and both the original uh, well not when i'm not say the original i mean like the 90s you know ic belt and then came like you know the late you know early 2000s ic belt I really like those two belts for basically not just because of the way they look, but just the way they were represented in that fashion. And now it's just like, I look at the icy belt and it's just anything of any devoid of any type of, like I said, personality or any type of entry that me wanted to even purchase that belt, even if I was a collector. I liked it. I mean, I, I liked it when it was introduced. I was like, Oh, that's a cool looking belt. But then I was like, it's not as good as the, the one they were using. I wanted them to do is just get rid of the fucking get rid of the white strap and you should have just had the classic intercontinental title with the black strap. I've always thought it looked better with the black strap. Do you think by all in 2024 that uh, the international title will be defended internationally? Maybe it should have. It should be. I mean, again, if you're they always bring the NJPW guys in or they bring the IWGP belts in. Why not defend more of the AEW belts, not just the ROH belts, but the AEW belts over in Japan more? It doesn't necessarily just have to be New Japan. Because Tony, anyway. because Tony, because Tony you have a title are, called um, That's why. Does anybody you know? Who, we're going, you know? Who, who's defending the 24-7 belt right now? Anybody know? That's, it's, it's gone. That, they, dude, that thing's been gone. defunct for years. <laughs> Dana Brooks threw it away. <laughs> what and actually you know what's funny you know what's funny nerdy i literally recently found out about that i'm like when was the last time they did a 24 7 gimmick and i'm yeah, like oh they got rid of the belt like a year and a half ago or something or two was, years ago done, like i it was done with our truth our truth was the last guy i think you hold it it was just gone he held the belt yeah, he, he, he won the championship he won the injured he won the championship 46 times or something <laughs> yeah. I thought it was 54. like it was some <laughs> in stat yeah. or yeah, 54. And it's literally like literally on his Wikipedia and WWE even will say this. It's like, well, our truth actually is one of the most decorated uh, superstars mm-hmm. technically in WWE history. Cause he won 54 fucking championships. Like <laughs> That's what I'm saying like if they didn't, fucking crazy. It, it, then, then he's still technically the champion. No, Dan he, yeah, he should just literally, and then no one he should, be, no, he should was, literally no, just it come was out. Nikki Cross, Nikki Cross threw it away. Oh, oh, that was, you're, that was the last segment where oh, she threw uh, it. Yeah, in she the did trash? the she did the Alondra Blaze with it basically. <laughs> threw it in the trash. Fuck, that doesn't mean it's it's never dead, but Nick never Foley forgotten. Oh, Guys, did anyone? Did anyone remember we were all it? looking forward to it too, and like remember we're like, oh my god, they're gonna bring in the hardcore belt. And he's like, no, nah, it's the the twenty four seven championship. Yeah, yeah, Mick, Fo- yeah like, Mick Foley takes it out, and everybody's just like, my belt, my belt, what? my belt. Where Scott he, Hall threw away yeah. the TV title, and uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan found it in the trash and decided to defend it. <laughs> no, but uh, the best the best one is uh, Shane. Um, they were doing a backstage segment with the Ministry of Darkness or the Corporate Ministry, and Shane has the belt. Midian out of nowhere is like, hey Shane, you got a nice shiny belt? Can I have it? And he's like, whatever, I don't care. I'm like, yeah, wow, like, that's maybe, how you that's how you what wait, what yeah. belt? Uh, wait, the, what the belt are you talking belt. about? The European. Yeah. Oh wait, about, yeah, I um... yeah, Shane was European champion. Wait, Shane was just yeah, Shane was European champion. He just gave the belt away. I don't even remember that. The, I thought he, he lost the belt them. to like and this is another reason why when I tell people, oh, you really miss the attitude area? Yeah, there were a lot of just random things that just happened. We had, had no setup, no build, nothing. Yeah, I mean, I would, I still would rather watch the Attitude Era, yeah. but guys, what did you think of tonight's Jericho's promo? Because Jericho's like promo are, uh, are excused when you have some of the most fucking historic episodes of wrestling television in history. Am I glitching out? Is that why nobody's responding? Because I, I am so sorry if that's happening. No, you, I can hear you. You guys are all talking a lot. I, I. But you are glitching, but you guys are, you know, we're still talking, so you, it seemed okay. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to, I don't want to pull a fucking dork night and like take over the whole show. Oh, yeah. Hey, my podcast, so. I did this. Oh, on my podcast, I did that. On my podcast, <laughs> I did this. Hey, Rostafi, you know what? You should come on my podcast. You know, bold of him to steal your host live on your own show. Yeah, it's like you know, normally I, I had so many people messaging show. me, dude. Like he was, he's like a rapist. 
<laughs> like that guy is legit, know. like a rapist for his himself. Like it was very, it's very bizarre. You come on his show. I've I never, don't know. I, I, dude. I'm gonna if I ever go on his show ever again, which you know, I mean, it's almost pointless. But if I do, I'm just gonna be like everything that we bring up. I'm gonna be like, you know, I said that on my show, and then on my show this happened. Oh, by the way, hey, who's your co-host again? What's his name? Max. Yo, Max. You know what? I gotta get you on my show. My show. I'm gonna get a. <laughs> I'm gonna get a T-shirt for Dork well, Night. I, I love, just gonna say my what, show on it. What I love is that. Is that we always fucking rag on Dork Knight because he's so dumb, but he had the audacity to be like talking down to everybody last night. Like he was talking about wrestling like everybody else was like dumb fucking retards. We're like, oh, that, that's what's happening. That, oh my God, I thought it was all real. <laughs> it's too real to be, damn it. Like the way he was talking to Nerdy, like Nerdy makes a joke. He's like, "Yeah, I think they should just do like a glass on a pole or something." It's obviously joking. And Dork Knight's like, "Are you fucking serious, bro? You're so stupid." Like he's take this guy has literally no sense of humor or sense of irony or wit. Yeah, he's, he's just so fucking bro, bro. retarded. We got to put a glass on a pole and fill it with Viagra, bro. Bro, it will sell ratings. Yeah, yeah, I got to no, say, no. he's right. That I mean, you know, what was, you know, always nerdy. No, there. but nerdy, nerdy made a quick joke. Like, he was obviously just like, whatever, man. And Dork Knight, like, was so, he thought he was being serious about it. Right. Yeah, I said a real glass on a pole match, which is a callback to the CM Punk thing. And I think he took it personal. Because he's a CM Punk mark. Well, he's a, I mean, he's an ultimate CM Punk fan, and that's fine, but, you know, hey. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. He's a fucking liberal cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he loves he loves Right off the gate. Hey, you know who else is in the, uh, in, in the Discord today? It was uh, D. Welsh. Did you see him lighting up Trump in the Discord today? I know. <laughs> all, I love D. Dude, you know what? D. Welsh and I have been, like, recently, I feel like we've been cool. I don't know how he feels or whatever, but... I even asked, I was like, dude, you really don't like Trump, do you? He's like, I was just respond. I was just typing what they, the acclaimed said. He got triggered. <laughs> I got I to gotta tell everybody, if you're not part of the Discord on my Discord today, um, we had we had Donald Trump in the Discord literally fighting with D. Welsh. And here's just a little bit of it. I put it up on my other channel. Listen here's to a this. sample. Or the grand, whatever you want to be called. So this is what we're going to be talking about today. Wigman's dude zero four 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 oh one K is gonna be taken away. But listen here, pal. <laughs> you keep saying, you keep... He told D Walls he was gonna take away his four oh one K. Four oh one K it will away. be taken away. But listen here, pal. You keep saying I keep getting indicted. The FBI is after me. That they have higher standards for me. But the thing is, they work for me. Trust me. Unless they work for the deep state Democrats. It doesn't matter. But what matters is you're going to vote for me anyway. Keep crying your liberal tears. I'm going to take a golden shower with them. Okay? Oh, my God. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure D. Welsh is on some kind of list for some of the stuff he said about Trump uh, earlier. Uh, Wait, he made a list? Be the president. Obviously, I will forever be the president in the American people's lives. You don't matter. I matter. So you better vote for me, or I'll come down there personally to your house, and I will sniff your ass. <laughs> You'll sniff oh, it. Good stuff. Biden will sniff your daughter's ass. So then uh, D. Welsh says, oh, my God, you're a nasty F. Trump. Why are you sniffing people's asses? You would never come here to Carolina. You want to know why, Trump? I'd be waiting for you on my porch, and I won't even read what he said next. <laughs> probably get you investigated <laughs> by the Secret Service, what he said next. And uh, Trump <laughs> responded to that uh, after he said he really, that. But he looks like Wait, the guy dude, who would be waiting for somebody on their porch. There's a reason why I would never go to any of the Carolinas, especially North Carolina, for huh? one reason only. North Carolina. I'm not going to go to Black Mountain. Because I'm not going to give out $150 to anybody for a mask, including you. You might want $250 or $250,000 for me. But the thing is, oh Wegman, I'm not going to give you anything, trust me. The only thing I'll probably give you is a mask of myself. So that way, come 2024, 
you could dress up as me because you want to be me so badly and vote for me in the pause. Promote me, President Dino J. Trump. And it's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. Bro, I don't know who did that. I, dude, I, this I, broke me. That voice. This is this, you don't know who I did mean, that? I thought you it don't was know a robot, dude. I didn't know it was real. I didn't. And then he started. He said, my name, Joe Cronin, in the crayon. He said, maybe you need the crayon or whatever. And I went, oh, my God, this guy's really doing Like, I couldn't believe that's that. No, that's no Vanix. I know, but I mean, I I just had no idea that he. I thought it was like a robot or something. He was that was unbelievable. Oh. His cadence, oh, his, like, okay. the, the way he spoke, the way he spoke, yeah, was, yeah, like, it, dead on. Dude, his he tamper, got it. The timbre in his voice towards every end of his sentence was just so spot on. Like that will go down. I go up. See, I go down. He's he's like a fusion. He's like a fusion of um. There was like one guy who was doing the Trump impression that was pretty good at it, but he yeah. got like the cadence wrong. He's like a fusion of that guy with yeah. my impression where it's like sort of I've got some of the like the ticks or like the weird personality things that I, I, I feel like, like Trump if you has. took the best parts of yours and the best parts of his, we would really we would actually have Donald Trump. Like it's right. so close. No, you know, like, he, it's like we fused both of those things together and you, you get Novanix's impression, which is just so fucking perfect. I'm just gonna say, just why don't you just use AI? Just get both of your timbres of your voice recorded That's and then not you have fun. Donald Trump. Yeah, and That's but it's the anymore, it's the guy's right? cadence though that was good. Like even because I at first I was like, well, it's not the best Trump, but it sounds pretty good. But the cadences were so good, and what he was saying. Oh my god! Like, I was yeah, like, wow. We would love to have you on the show. We'd love to ask you questions. So um, feel free to show up. Yo, Scorp is there Trump, really oh not going to be a world title match at fucking All In or All Out yeah, rather? Excellent. Nope. Excellent. I gotta put this dude over. Scorp, Scorp target in the chat. Free my uncle Trump. I'm dead. It's done. Make that into a T-shirt. So, oh I'm assuming. I'm assuming at all out is when we're gonna get. Well, first we're gonna get a title change, and then we're gonna get the the inevitable turn. Well, again, I don't. Nothing was really. Nope. Led to that tonight in any shape or form yes they had the promo but nothing other out of the ordinary and didn't they say in the promo early on with mjf and uh adam cole that yeah. apparently mjf has the week off or whatever so there's nothing so, yeah so basically mjf has a week off because he doesn't he doesn't want to wrestle but we got we got no, no titles for that real championship uh, for CM Punk even if he shows up in collision is not gonna so what's the main, so this is my question what's the meaning they're event having a tag match for the ROH titles, titles. It, it was just an idea. Oh, we're gonna have all in, and we're gonna have all out a week later. We're gonna have a spectacle of wrestling. Uh, what, who yeah, I think I think they were really they were really just thinking of like, oh, wouldn't would it be so crazy if we followed up this ginormous show with another really big <laughs> show with another one in Chicago? They're and, defending the tag titles think... at all out, dude. Tonight, I know, but that's event? no, but no, no, so no. But got... what we're Pico, Pico. What we're saying is, is that. That's all you've got for MJF and Adam Cole. Oh, so yeah. it's like they defend those tag team titles. If if there is a turn that's going to happen, which probably isn't, it wasn't built up at all tonight. So it's kind of like, what, what are you? What are we even doing? You know, it's just, what's the point it's of having a pay per view? Week off and not even had a, a show tonight, dude. Chris, well, that's Chris, Jericho's, <sighs> Chris Jericho's promo tonight. Like when it, when you hear it, he comes out and he was like, "Hey, Sammy, uh, I'm so sorry that I." shoved you you know after i lost i was so out of my emotions and everything and you sammy it's okay man no problem and then jericho says something that pisses off sammy a little bit and it's like hey man if you should, if you should have, have, if you should have hit him with the bat harder then i would exactly. have been the champion oh, that type of thing yeah and then they just go back and forth back and forth it's like how about we go to the tag team championships <laughs> yeah great let's be friends again that promo made and people will be like oh, yeah but they were putting the seeds for the turn that promo was one of the most boring promos I've ever heard in my entire fucking yeah. life. Yeah, it's because you know the turn, because you know the turn's gonna happen, and it's like at this point, it's just you're just wasting like, time. I like, hate, can we get to it already? I hate when wrestling treats fans like fucking retarded five year old people. I hate the obvious. Ooh, he's gonna turn. What are we doing like, here? Like I said, like earlier, it was too much hugging and friendship and stuff. You got best friends. You got MJF and Cole. You got Sammy and and Jericho. There's too much. And, and here's me. And this is Minimum the problem too. MJ MJF is a tweener. And the thing is, people want to cheer for him, but yet he still wants to kind of remain almost in that heel like state. 
But the thing is, if he's he's not a full blown heel until he becomes a full blown heel, which hasn't been really since he started. If you take a yeah. look at that, and then and then with Adam Cole, granted, it'd be nice and refreshing to see him as a heel. But he was a heel before he got injured, and all due respect to him, even though he was on the rise, he wasn't really making exactly. a dent as far as being an overblown heel. So again, if, we if we turns heel. I, I feel like we these turn like. The, with Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara, and um, or Guevara, I don't know how you say his last name uh, exactly. Guevara, Guevara, Guevara. Sorry. Uh, and then the MJF and Adam Cole thing. It's like everybody's expecting a turn. I feel like the only thing you could do to make it interesting is not do the turn. You know what I mean? Like for Sammy and Jericho, honestly. I, for someone who doesn't really tune into AEW much, when I do tune in, I actually like seeing them together. Like, I think that's cool, like, that they haven't broken up yet. So, I, I don't know. I just feel like it'd be like, oh, yeah, you're going to throw away this, like, five-year thing so we can get another fucking turn and heel turn angle. And get another and, stable that doesn't last. Yeah, like, we've gotten so many of those, not just in uh, AEW, but, like, just in professional wrestling this year. How many fucking turns have we gotten? We, 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 turns we like and... Them. We have like four different stories of you're my friend, you're not my friend, he's my friend, you're not my friend. <laughs> and the funny thing is, this is also happening in the back, in the locker room. And, it's and they won't even put that on what TV. Is this and they just did it too with, with M- before MJF and Adam Cole, they were literally just doing it with MJF and Sammy Guevara. Isn't it so weird how they don't want to push the reality-based stuff that's happening in the exactly. locker room, yet they're going to push all this other friendly, oh, I'm your friend, no, you're not my friend. If Cody was here, and no disrespect, but I think Cody would definitely have a say about this. He'd be like, what are we doing? Like, can we change this? Even though Dude, that no, Tony's the head that. booker, he would no, still be like, Tony, you got to change this now. This is like high school drama, bro. This is like they fucking high school No, it's drama. worse. It's worse. It's like elementary drama. I'm not paying fifty dollars for this show, and I'm not even reviewing all out, bro. I mean, look at this. What is yeah. this? It's ridiculous, the, dude. The last number of go, dude, the what? last number of go home shows for AEW in general have been so below standard that every time when I'm trying to look forward to a pay per view, I'm not really that excited. Yes, the matches are good, but the build up is horrible. Bro, yeah, I'm and it sucks to too because then you also got payback this Saturday. For all my all my WWE tards, and they haven't really built up that pay per view too much either because of the whole Bray thing. So they were supposed to have a Jimmy Uso segment last SmackDown. They're, they're doing they they're doing this, this this Friday. They're doing it this Friday. Yeah. But now it's like, what they are they going to build a match with Jimmy from with just I'm a assuming, fucking one day? They're going to put two weeks. They're going to put two weeks of work into one night, which sucks. But again, they had to do that because dude you gotta honor the memory of ray and terry funk that's what you had to do you guys, and again raw guys get ready get ready for a fucking number 37 minute bloodline segment where the fucking guy comes out the music plays for three minutes then the guy fucking fiddles around with the microphone for fucking two minutes then says one thing is interrupted by somebody who says things for five minutes and then that with person like is interrupted. minutes of wrestling in, in general with only 25 yeah, minutes of like, wrestling throughout the entire like, show <laughs> that's the thing that's annoying is like that that's like i like bloodline segments but now that i know that they're gonna have to make up for two weeks basically it's gonna you're just like oh my god God, it's going to be so fucking long. Like, get to the point. You know what I mean? Like, some of these segments, and it's not just with Bloodline, but, like, a lot of wrestling where it's just like, you know, we were talking about it earlier with the uh, Jericho and Guevara thing. It's just like, get to the fucking point. Like, we get it. Well, One is going to turn on the out. other. The yeah. same, same thing with not just All Out, but also the same thing with All In. Like, we barely had any build because I think Tony was just panicking because of the lack of, you know, people that were on because he had injuries. There was also other to my knowledge as far as them not being involved like the first all in and there's probably things that we don't even know about behind the scenes with that so it, it's just not been a great end of the summer you know and then also with the drama with punk again and dude there's just something about all in and all out that just rubs punk the wrong way apparently he just does not care he doesn't, yeah, about he this kind of of vagina. well it's also not just him it's fucking you know these reporters who are spending more time reporting on this shit instead of the fucking no, stuff wait, going on. No, I'm off. blaming the locker room. Luke, I'm blaming the locker room. No, I know. I'm blaming, these... I'm blaming him. I'm blaming him. I'm blaming the locker room, but I'm also blaming the reporters because it's like these are the same people that will be like, I can't believe that we have to spend our time 
dealing with this. So it's like, well, then don't fucking make a news report about it if you don't want to spend you. time talking about Thank it. Thank you. Luke, I'm it, telling you, it, Joe, and you and you know this too. When any when somebody gives a a, a report in from the locker room, right? A number one, you shouldn't be doing that because locker room etiquette. B, you have literally not all the details of a situation that you're not a part of, so you're just giving yourself clout so you can get you know a five star rating or whatever in the review. And then three, and most importantly. I get the feeling that they thrive on the drama for all the wrong reasons. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is ridiculous. What? I said, Joe, you're welcome to join your own show, by the way. No, Mr. Pico. No, no. You see, this isn't Joe's show anymore. This is Rostafa's show. I, I ah. swear it's been like probably 15 minutes in the perfect example is right there where he asked. He started that by asking Joe a question and then finished it with three points about an uh, opinion he had on the product. But no, no, but Joe's gonna, Joe would give his, you know, his deal. And like, I'm just trying to get little pieces of truth in there just because I know for a fact that whenever, you know, that comes out there, I know Joe's going to definitely bring it home with whatever he's got. So that's another reason why I kind of add that, those little caveats. You know, this is I, think just, I think we're just. I think just got a little excited about the whole thing. You, know, you get you're right off of uh, off of a show and stuff, so you kind of have all this pent up energy. I get I get what you're saying, Nerdy. I get what you're saying, Rostafa. But Joe, what do you think about uh about the build? I guess for all out or all whatever the fuck. Are you are you personally excited to see any of these matches? Yeah. I know you're not paying for the pay per view, but are you personally excited to see anything? Joe, judging by that response, and probably not. <laughs> I don't think asleep. he's. I don't. Uh, he might be at his chair right now, trying to put on his microphone. So hold on one sec. I just want to wait. Yeah, yeah. I, it's been probably twenty minutes since he got a word in, so it's like I don't blame him for leaving. <laughs> Man, to me, well, again, yeah, I mean, I, nerdy. I, I, I mean, nerdy. We. It's kind of how a conversation is supposed to happen. Like people are supposed to talk. Then you cut in with your thing, and you cut like it's not just. Did and I get why asleep? he gets frustrated. I guess why he gets frustrated, but I mean, you can't put it on someone else when you don't respond and don't say anything, and then it's like, oh, it's my fault because I was talking. It's like no, you could have cut me off. The next bloodline feud will be uh, Roman Solo and Jimmy against Jay and Sammy and Kevin. Obviously, we still men. we we still got. You know, Survivor Series coming up, and there's gonna, I don't know if there's gonna be one War Games match or two just because of the brands, but it, it's pretty Jimmy much looking that him. way. Yeah, we're good. We're gonna get Jimmy and Jay. Um, I don't know if they're gonna do, I think there's, wait, is there a Hell in a Cell pay per view coming up, or is that done with and beyond? Because I can literally see yeah. some type of cage match with these guys one on one. I guess it's uh, our it fault not that he's not talking. Thing. Question no, he, he left a long he left probably 15 minutes ago i bet and, and i get it yeah no i don't get it because we're doing a show and so it's like if if the reason why he left was because of us talking shit. you ever think of that it's okay i'm just saying i'm well, i'm responding to what nerdy's saying if that's the reason why he left i don't think that probably is but if that's the reason why he left i mean you can't fucking blame us we were just he had to take a shita. he had to take a what shita. we're doing on the show no, and I don't blame you, Luke. I'm not blaming really. It's uh, I like for example no, no, contributing, dude. To to making to make sure that the host of the show is involved, I would ask him questions like when he's when he interjected and said, "I'm not yeah. spending money on it. I'm not watching it. I'm not even going to probably cover it." I would instead of going on a diatribe about your opinion, I like some people did. I would maybe ask him, "Oh, well, what is something that could make that?" change or what would you see on collision that would change your mind um okay. involved you know that's the and i'm not i'm not I, pulling fingers at anybody that's just it's hard to ask that question though when he's not at the seat where he's supposed to be you know because okay, well, 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 you know weird shit they did a promo for rampage and they go like adam page against the fucking something brian keith like right right who the fuck is brian keith well, again, I, I the logic is they're trying to push other stars because they don't have dark anymore. They don't have the YouTube we'll shows anymore. So they're trying to, 
they're trying to push guys on Rampage because Rampage is not a big show like it once started out. It's like this. It's like Sunday Night Heat in like 2004, 2005. Now it, that's where it's I was gone just asking to. Who Brian Keith was? I, mean, I happen Brian, to know. You don't know who Taylor Brian. Is, you, don't know, you don't know who Brian Cage is? Brian Keith. Oh, Keith. I'm not about to say. I thought you said Cage again. I was like, was it Keith or no, Cage? Brian no, Keith. Keith I, Brian Keith, I believe, is a new guy that came in. Um, again, I don't know too much about him, but yeah, they're just trying to push new stars on Rampage because Dynamite and Collision are the two main shows. That is. The way they were, yeah, just it was like, really, you're you're pushing that as a promo? Great. Uh, it's, again, they're trying to really keep Rampage alive, but I don't see Rampage being on the air from you know yeah. like three to five years from now at this rate. And three different company titles were. On the show tonight, yep. AW, IWGP, and Ring of Honor. I mean, come right. on! Uh, again, they're trying Take to juggle show. so much. They're they're Take really show, trying Tony. to juggle so much that this could have been on All In. Like honestly, like all these titles, everything like that could have been on All In and some of the stars, but they just didn't do that. Bring back the AWA fucking. <laughs> yeah, bring back, bring back, bring back all the. Why would it be? Bring back all the. Why would it be on all in? That would have been like Most a fifty-five minute match. fucking card. Well, no, unless if you're like you know Leah Maivia in uh, Hawaii, and you're going to book every territory, have fifteen matches on your show. You know. <sighs> Overkill. He books yep. like a fucking mark. And honestly, I'm so the fucking shorter, like you know, pay per view format. I guess WWE because it it has made things so much fucking easier. Am I breaking up? I'm sorry. No, no, you're good, brother. You're good. For now. I gotta. I just make have to make sure because like you never know. That's Speaking true, of which, right? Omar's been quiet. Omar, you still with us, brother? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Omar. I'll, yeah, uh, fuck around and find out. Yeah, right. Omar, I got a question for you. So based upon, and I'm speaking mainly of payback before we get all out. As far as what you see mainly on SmackDown, which, by the way, I've been paying a little bit more attention to SmackDown than Raw lately. But based upon what you're seeing as far as payback goes, is there any one match that you would say, you know what, I may not want to pay the entire amount or or, or whether the subscription Peacock, whatever, or just waste my time watching this. But if I'm going to watch one match, what would it be? Jesus. (laughs) One match if I watch it payback. Just one match and just say I'm done. Don't want to watch the rest of the show. I mean, I mean, there's 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 a couple of good matches on paper. Like Rollins Nakamura should be an amazing match, but I am not excited one bit for it. Not one bit. I mean, that, it, it's so far it's Becky Trish, Steel Cage, yeah, Rollins yeah. Nakamura, Rhea Ripley, Rodriguez, Mysterio Theory. LA, I would say LA Knight Miz. LA Knight Miz probably is the I was gonna only... say LA Knight Miz the same. Same. Yeah. Because LA Knight Miz is the only thing that had a glimpse, a glimpse of a basic storytelling and a good promo the other night on Monday Night Raw. That was Oh, it. so yeah. so Jaro so Jaro too, and again, I this has kind of already been talked about, but Kingston and Shibata versus Claudio and Yuta has been added to the all out card. I mean, yeah, I get a jar, but it's you know, again, going with what I'm talking about as far as like what one match you would look forward to. I mean, it kind of seems that the payback on paper, the card, you know, the the payback card on paper is more appealing. Even if you just took one or two matches away and you just left with like, you know, just a few is already outshining all outs card. And the lack of the the fact that the shows are are too close together. This is, I think what people need to realize that for AW, this is one of their biggest shows of the year, even after following their biggest show of all time and the biggest wrestling I attended show of all time. time. But, but besides that, this is literally WWE's like cool down pay-per-view after SummerSlam. You know what I mean? Like this is a nothing pay-per-view for them. So That's it's not going to have nearly as much build for shit you know, like the Seth and, and Nakamura thing has only been like a three or four week build. Uh, Trish and, and Becky, you know, they've been building that for a while, but it's not that serious. Like nobody's like viewing it's it as a top warm. tier it's view. Been, yeah, Luke, this is this is a B level. This is a this is a B level pay per view. You know, this isn't like where anything like major is going to happen. 
And unfortunately, those things are going to happen sometimes when you have, you know, the amount of pay-per-views that WWE has a year. But I'm not particularly, like, thinking every storyline is garbage like some people do. I just don't think they're that interesting. Like, Seth, I thought, cut a pretty good promo this this Monday. But, you know, that was about it. You know, they, do, they did steal my Shinsuke Nakamura vignette idea. Um, so, you show. know, I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm kind of proud. That's not the first time, too, that they've taken ideas from me, like, that I've specifically said, and I'm like, oh my god, they fucking did it. So, you know, I'm not saying I'm a genius or anything, but, um... <laughs> you never say that. Toot, toot, toot. But getting back to, um, with Payback, um, I think, for me, even though that it is a B-list show, there are going to be certain elements that are going to lead, like I said, into the fall pay-per-views. Um, Survivor Series, I think everybody's looking forward to just based upon, like, what are going to be the mixed tag matches that they're going to be seeing? What are going to be the um, the War Games matches, if come to fruition? What are going to be the Survivor Series traditional tags? Like, how is that going to lead into going into next year? And what caveats are going to be led? Because, again, we still don't know as far as, like, the world titles are concerned in terms of, I mean, we know what we're, what, what we're thinking we know at this point. But then as far as what AEW goes, now we have two titles, world titles, and eventually we're going to see a merger at some point. But the problem is that we brought this up last night. You have the real world's title. You have the actual AEW title. One title's on collision. One title's on dynamite. Once that title becomes unified, if it ever does, and God forbid if it's punk, how in the hell are you going to justify him being on both shows? Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> I don't know. Luke, okay, 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 Luke, Luke, there you go, Luke. That's what you wanted. <laughs> no, no, That's no, no, what no. you wanted, Luke. No, 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 uh, no. Oh, I thought I, I, thought I was. Sorry. But, well, that was, uh, Luke, that was Luke had a question for you, Joe. Luke had a question for you. Uh, what was the question? I did I'm have sorry. a question. I'm sorry. I, I did mute, have a question. I, I muted myself because Leah came. I was talking to Leah about something. What's up? Came oh, for- I'm so yeah. Ner- nerdy said it was all our fault. So fuck you, nerdy. No, um, what I was gonna say is, Joe, you personally aren't interested in in buying the pay per view. Are are you at least like looking forward to one match to rewatch later? Like, if so, what match would that be? Right. Um, of of all the matches, right? That I and I don't really want to watch any of them at this point. I feel like, but <laughs> of, of all the matches, um, all right. I'm looking at the matches really quickly, and I'm going to tell you right now. My level of excitement, uh, I feel like, oh, boy. Oh, my God, this is really hard, man, because I, I get. What the fuck was that? Um, I, I, think, I, was just, I was just doing your voice, whatever you just did. I think that, did I do that? I think that, um, no, I, I couldn't, I don't do that. I have a god <laughs> complex. I'm sorry. No, um, no. Orange, uh, or- Orange Cassidy and Moxley did just probably set up the most important thing, I guess. But I would say Darby Allen and Luchasaurus could be funny. I-, I really don't know, dude. I don't. I don't care. Okay. Oh my god! It happened again. I don't know what that is, but it happened again. It's a car driving by Rostafa. Is it? <laughs> I have to assume that's what it is, or it's fucking the fucking dumbass that just joined in. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it sounds like someone dragging a fucking body across the ground. <laughs> when I find out who did it, I'm muting them. Um, here's the thing. So I, uh, yeah, I'm not interested in this at all. I, 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 for listen, I, I covered AEW the other day, All In or whatever, London, whatever. Eight hours. It took up eight hours of my only day off when I I, I I could do almost anything, right? Like I could have done, I could have gone to work. I, I actually could have gone to one appointment at work, which would have taken me about four hours. So I could have worked about four hours and potentially made two hundred dollars, right? Which is super important, three hundred bucks maybe. All right. So, but I, I, you know, it's my day off, so I cover AEW for eight hours, and I, I think I made after. I I think I made like I think I made like forty bucks. Oh my god! Okay, it's Rostafa. He's getting muted. Um, so, wait, wait, wait. so I, I it What's was your... I, I made four, I made forty dollars 
Eight hours. I covered AEW for eight hours. I had to watch it. I had to find the fucking thing. And then I paid for it because all the streams I had, dude, were shutting down and whatever. And I, and I had to work around the house for like an hour and a half. So I needed to be mobile with it. And I can't log into Discord because Discord is in, on my old phone. There's a two authenticator app that's plugged in. And because my old phone, I never transferred it. It's stuck on the old phone, but my old phone is smashed and broken and, bro and never going to work again. And so I called Discord people to be like, yo, uh, I don't have any access to my, my authenticator thing. And the people, you know what they told me? I said, but I, I have my phone number so you can text my new phone. And I have my Discord and I have my email. I have everything. So this should be easy to just flip it. And they're like, no, we, you can't do that. You have to make a new one. <sighs> so I'm awesome. like, oh my god! So I can only access access this Discord because I don't remember the password. I can only access Discord right here on this computer because it auto logs in. Um, so you would have to start a completely. You're gonna have to start a new Discord. Yes. Yeah, it's been like that. It's been like that for over a year. So anyway, because because you would say, well, why wouldn't you just join Discord with Mr. Pico was in here with the what? And I'm like, yeah, or whoever was broadcasting it. And I was like, yeah, I know, but whatever. Um. So yeah. Well, why don't you just why don't you just create your own personal uh, Discord? Yeah, I mean, you know? I, I mean, like, yeah, you're right, and I'll have to do Danny, something. Danny fucktard or something. Yeah, Dan fuckhead. Um, maybe <laughs> I could do that, but no, yeah. it's just, dude, it's, it's, it's like the last time I covered AEW pay per view. It didn't do so well either. The ad revenue was terrible, and everything was terrible. The only yeah. sa the only saving grace I can give AEW all in is a content creator. <laughs> That's what we are now, <laughs> content creator. <laughs> um, uh, is that it did good in views. It did well view wise. Like we got a lot of got a couple, you know, subs. I don't know, sixty subs or something. And the views. It seems like it's more. It seems like it's more worth it. Um, to just do. I guess the the fallout of AEW shows because you know something crazy is going to happen at the end of the night or the next day or something yeah. like that. <laughs> Just cover the drama of everything that goes on afterwards. But I mean, it's like I, I get so I don't know. So like this was not the first time I've felt like wow, man, a pay per view, Jesus. Well, you know, I better. I recently started just stealing them and watching on the f on the free sites, you know, because again, which is something I used to do. I did that back in 13, 14, 15. But you know, when I started, what I do. Yeah, when I started crushing it though, you know, and, and killing it, I was like, "Oh, I'm going to buy these things because they look way better when you buy them." And fuck it. And I and I can spend more time watching them. Sometimes when I wa if I watch with a group of people too, I get thrown off on my views of what I really saw. So like I try, yeah. I, I have to like watch it in isolation and, and to really you know, but... no, I agree. I agree because when you do when you did the um the live stream for Royal Rumble mm -hmm. this year, we like I I don't know everybody was shitting on the show the entire time, and then when I rewatched it, I was like, this was a pretty decent show. Like I thought the Rumble was pretty good, I, and then you watch it with everybody else, and like everybody's like, yeah, this is fucking garbage, man. Yeah, what the fuck are they doing, man? Yeah, so I think it's like we all get this like mentality of like, well, we're having a lot of fun and like entertaining ourselves by shitting on stuff and all that, but then at that point we're kind of skewering like what, you know, and I don't have the don't have the sound up high because I'm maybe I'm streaming too, so the sound has to be off or down. Like it's just not fair. Oh. I don't think it's fair to the product to review it that way for me. I always fuck it up then. So yeah, there's a part of me that's like that's why I was like, I'm going to buy it. So I bought it. You know what I mean? Fuck it. I made, I made, you know, what did I make? Whatever, 80 bucks or, or 70 bucks or something. We'll take away the 50 bucks I spent on the pay-per-view. I made $30 in eight hours. It's like I could have gone, I should have just gone to work and then had an extra the rest of the day with my family. And so that, See, that's the, like that that's show. That's the thing. You only off. do it for money. Yeah, well, no, it's not. It's, 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 no, it's Joe. It's I for, the for the money. That's the only thing you give a damn about is the money. It's like, no, nah, man, it's like in the middle of a Sunday, I, I thought about maybe I won't do it. You know what I mean? But I'm like, no, I've got to cover this. I've got to cover all in. It's the middle of the day. Fine. Fuck it. Whatever. But yeah, it yeah. sucked my whole day. Like I, I couldn't believe I was like, damn, I just I mean, and I was, right back. I to was just work, saying dude. I was just saying that you, and I really love the fact that WWE went to a much shorter pay-per-view schedule or, or not schedule. You know what I mean? Like format yeah. like it's only now their shows are at most like three or four hours you know and they never go over like 11 or 12 o'clock like i think the only time they went to 12 was um was this SummerSlam, 
I think yeah. that's the only time I've ever seen them go past midnight. Well, uh, maybe I have to rape people. I don't know. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe I'll fuck you. Maybe I won't. I don't know. Maybe I'll fuck you. I wish I could do them. I, I, oh, my God. I would call people. I would just call random people all day. I can fuck with people. You can do the Mitch you McConnell do. where you just sit there in silence. <laughs> we'll right back. All right, Ryback is the best one you can do. Oh, did you, Joe, did you get your? Uh, did you get the message from Ryback earlier? Still shock. Oh, Joe, go, what's going you? on, man? Whoa. What's going on? <laughs> Where am I? Uh, what's up? Uh, this uh, is Brett, man. I got a question for you. Hey, man. <laughs> This mis- no, it, my, my mic is that messed up. Whoa. I'm in the middle of a bit. I'm Mitch McConnell. Who are you? How come? How come the Democrats only make fun of me, but not Biden? Tough G, ask Mitch McConnell your question. Go ahead. Go ahead, ask me your question. I borrow all. The country's money to fund my failed state. Oh. I'm the well, what was I'm what was a, Tough G One gonna say? I'm one of the worst Republicans in the country, but my state votes me in because I'm get all the money from the United States to my state, and I failed my state. I'm, look, I'm looking I don't, for Nancy Pelosi's pussy. Oh, Mitch, okay, okay Mitch. Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. McConnell, I think we're going to have to wrap it up. So, uh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> yeah, what is okay. what is Kentucky doing? Hey. How is Kentucky? Get, get him off the stage. Are get him off the stage. He's off, like shouting. Are we off the air? If we're you off gotta the get air. Off. You, get, you, you gotta get off the Mitch. microphone. Well, Mitch, since, how is Kentucky? Hey. Now step away Kevin, from the microphone. Since we're off, no, get off. Uh, since nope. we're off the put air, I gotta tell you, Kevin. What are we gonna do about all the blackies? microphone. Get him off the stage. Who is that guy? Wow, Holy that shit, is. Mitch. That is. I don't think Mitch knew we were on the air. Still, Mitch. Mitch. Oh my uh, God. Real quickly, oh, Mitch. Yeah, Mitch let's, I thought you were making. I'm sorry, let's, real quickly, he wants to say of, bye. Uh, tough G. He, he wants to, oh my God. He wants to say bye to everybody really quickly. Audio only, please. Say one more thing, Mitch, and then you go, buddy. Mitch, thanks for being here. We'll see you, okay? Okay, Mitch? Oh, I love the darkies. Okay. Oh, no, no, right, no, 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 That's it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yo. I am uh, Mr. Shut McConnell's the fuck up, uh, Mitch. Press, fuck off, Mitch press McConnell. representative. You old fucking Do you know, do you know what I was trying to ask, uh, I was going to ask a wrestling question. Okay, go ahead and ask a wrestling question, question, Mitch. Are you a real person? Go ahead, Mitch. Yes, yes. Luke, yes, Luke. I've been on the show a bunch of times already. We've talked before. Yes, Mitch. Yeah, go ahead and that. ask a question, Mitch. Go ahead. I was just, uh, what's your opinion on CM Punk? I, I think he's leaving AEW. What do you think? Yeah, um, I'm glad it wasn't a racist question. Um, no, CM Punk. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know, man. I think, um, I think he should now because what's the fu- no? He's not leaving. He's the he's the most fucking he's the most uh, watched thing in the company. He's the biggest draw in the company. Why? You know what I'm saying? Like what? But why not use him? Who gives a shit if they're not going to use this stuff? Nobody ever. This is stupid. Well, do you, do you think he wants to leave? He might want to leave, but I don't think he, you know what? I, I don't think he really wants to leave. I think he got mad and said something, and somebody reported it. Um, but no, I don't think he's leaving, and I think that um, he's the biggest draw in the company and, and the and the most talked about thing in the company, and they're not utilizing it, so they're just fucking stupid. Tony Khan is a fucking idiot at this point, to be honest. Oh, look, this, my is the, this is sorry. My big complaint with it is, I mean, like you said, he is the most popular guy and the most over in the company. He's the biggest draw, and he knows that. He's getting paid tens of millions of dollars. He could do whatever he wants, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, all he, he had to do, a... all he had to do from the very beginning was keep his mouth shut. I mean, he's kind of bought a lot of the drama on himself. He bought a it... coke about it for no reason, <laughs> in the media scrum, caused everything. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that, that, but he might be causing it, but he's still the most, like, it's still, he's still the most trending and popular thing in the company. It's, it's crazy. Like, I feel like they, they just, they can't live without him, but it's frustrating. I, know, I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, gee, they're just going to ignore it and waste an opportunity again. That's what I think they're going to do. They're going to literally waste another opportunity when they could be using this guy to, uh, you know, get some traction. I mean, I mean, when he co- when he comes back, you know, whenever he comes back, he's, he's gonna probably have another blow up, and it's gonna be the same mess again. I mean, I don't know who he's gonna uh, feud with yeah. next when he comes back. Yeah, maybe maybe someone will be killed eventually, and then they'll have to do something. You know, that could be that could be that, that <laughs> could be good. The trailer, and then maybe they'll, maybe they'll bring Donald Trump in, and uh, he'll beat up Donald Trump. Yeah, maybe they'll bring Donald. I mean, maybe Donald Trump will rape Rene Paquette. Hey, remember this? Watch uh, the other show, smash your head, and motherfucker. Wow. Hey, Tommy, is uh, Chester sleepy? You just or would, basically would he did like the come out and talk to me too? Our Starbucks. You Watch this. That, right? It doesn't really. Yeah, I heard for, uh, Tim Hortons was fully gay. Uh... <laughs> blows with me. I'm gonna exchange buddy blows with you, motherfucker. Buddy blows. I'm gonna. Ex- <laughs> I'm gonna exchange buddy, buddy blows, blows. <laughs> bro. <laughs> like I'm sorry, I gotta clip that real quickly. Hold on, I gotta exchange buddy blows. Keep if he is, he's taking jokes of everything. <laughs> is, it, is this I've about always defended you, Tommy, and you act this way? Is Very it, disappointing. Is Tommy. this about what Dave attacked me? So I attacked you, motherfucker. So like, don't. No, but don't see, throw. you don't. If you're gonna exchange bloody, buddy buddy blows with me, I'm gonna exchange buddy blows with you, motherfucker. Buddy blows. No, but see, if you're gonna go that far, to <laughs> watch those cross, you dumbass. Then you'll understand what that. Means. <laughs> dude, somebody sent me that earlier. Buddy blows, dude. Oh, fucking losing it. Remember when you when you um refer to Renee Paquette, you have to call her remarkable. Renee. Oh yes, the remarkable Renee Paquette. I forgot. My bad. Look at this. Is my old be- sound. Look at my old. St- I should get that chair back. It looked good when I had a Hell in a Cell chair behind me for some reason. I don't know. I wish they would stop doing that. I, with her. For you, Joe. I just heard a whole bunch of mumbling from whole, everybody. Try it again. I got a, I got a question for you, Joe. Oh, okay, what's up, D Wells? Why is FTR working with the Bucks now? I thought FTR was pretty close with Punk, and now they're working with the Bucks. That's well, they've really always weird. said that they've always been like. Like we're not gonna take sides in this thing. They've always been like that. But you know what? Knowing CM Punk, if they don't All fully right. side with him eventually, like I'm telling you, man, we're gonna find out who's the more petty person because someone's gonna get pissed off. Either the young bucks are gonna get annoyed, punk. or Punk's gonna get pissed that they're that. You know what I'm saying? Like he's gonna get jealous I, or something. I, I don't know, bro. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious who's the most yeah. petty person. It's Punk. It's literally like li- not just AEW, but there's so many situations. Uh, from ROH, from WWE, where he was just a fucking cunt, like an entitled piece of shit. Like literally, he stopped being friends of. Ho- uh, <laughs> I almost called him Hogwarts with Hornswoggle. <laughs> he stopped oh being God. friends of Hornswoggle because the guy asked for somebody's number more than once. Yeah, that's a you know, weird or- thing. That's you a all weird have thing. decided oh, to take your hard-earned money. And to fund my the first show. drop to fund what I do, to fund what I believe in, to fund my godly ass. JCS Army. I gotta be honest, this this donation is starting to get Donate annoying. To me. <laughs> this one's gotta go, I think. Yeah, this one's probably your weakest. Acknowledge me. Because you put so little effort into it. Yeah. I just wanted to say like acknowledge me. Right. Gets me hyped though, kind of. The fucking MIDI version of Roman song. <laughs> hey, Joe, I just really started watching you because F paying 50 bucks for a PPV. But is there always so much disharmony among wrestlers, or is it that CM Punk is a D-bag? Spectral Citizen, thank you for the $30, man. Nah, dude, this is this has not been like this. AEW was like kumbaya for two years. For the first two years of AEW, it was like unbelievably kumbaya for the most part. 
And uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, and there's there's been a lot of yeah, but since the CM Punk, it's honestly see even the first year of CM Punk or so was pretty good, I think. But well, not I, even the first year; it was like more like the first two months. Yeah. I think it really people, and I don't know if it's the locker room that started, but definitely the fan base started getting like weirded out around the time that Cody left. Like I think when Cody left, they were like, "What? What's going on? Why would Cody leave? He was so gun ho about it." Yeah. And I think that was. That's like that was the was first around sign. the same time. That was the first. Yeah, that, that was, was the big the same sign. Time. That- yes, he will know. He first. That was the first. What do you call it? Shoot a drop, whatever. He him leaving was like what? And then we heard about the young bucks and the elite being like the click and bunch of bratty fucks. And didn't Cody leave after Punk got injured the first time? I think he left before um, during the whole Hangman thing. Like, you know, during that promo, oh, okay. I, I'm not exactly sure around, around that time. It was April, right? right? April or March. So for the people that don't know, basically, Hammond, Adam Page cut a retarded promo on Punk. It was so stupid and terrible. And then Punk didn't and know sucked. Punk didn't know what to do with it either. And then Hangman one night, like, was pissed. And then Punk buried him on a promo to get back at him. And that's when the pettiness started. And then... Um, then they had their backstage thing that everybody knows about. So it's like this has been brewing, and yeah, it does stem from CM Punk, but it stems from two alphas. And I would say the alpha, yeah. one alpha is Punk, and the other alpha is all the elite and original members of AEW that all followed the elite people, right. and, and now they're up against this alpha coming in. You know, so it's Ew. like, would you say it's a, like the gayest alpha shit that you'll ever like? It's yeah. so not alpha. It, this is it, not it's an passive, alpha thing. It's like passive and, aggressive alphas. It's weird. And you know what? I want to say like I would. I would say like this is one. This isn't something that happened. Like would happen back in the day. But it's it's exactly something that would happen back in the day. Only back then, you know, it probably would have been dealt with way quicker. You know, with a stabbing. <laughs> no, it, yeah, dude. Listen, back then, Undertaker and Vince and everybody in the back, they'd be like, "Get your shit together, or you're gonna get fucked up." And people were scared. Dude, people were afraid back... This is like little kids nowadays. People were afraid in the wrestling business in the WWE, even back in 96 and 7, people were afraid that if they did something wrong, there was going to be a fucking beatdown that was going to happen. And they were. Dude, fucking Shawn Michaels, although the click and all that stuff, he was worried about, you know, something could be done to me. Bret Hart, they were all worried about this stuff. They were worried little... they, They were worried about Savio Vega doing something. Like, dude, they were even scared of people like that that would that would, you know, hold you to something if you did something bullshit. Because well, everyone really it was, was Taker. So, really, it was Taker. It was really Taker it was, like, but it was a lot of people, dude. It wasn't just him. If you and you know what I mean, you know what I mean. You listen to shoot interviews. People talk about, you know, we were worried that these guys were all back waiting for us and the fucking this was happening. And they were getting together. and it's always some jobber too, like some guy that did nothing in the mid card yeah. is like the enforcer back there. Yeah, because you know what? Because dude, the jobbers took it even more seriously because they're like, I barely have a job on this thing. I've been, you know, they worked pool halls and shit like that. These guys took the business even more serious than the stars, it felt like, because the stars were like, oh, whatever, oh, my God. You know, um, but some of these guys took the business even more serious. So, dude, you had to watch out. Now you don't have to do that at all. It's Everyone's just a silly pants, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. dude, there, there's no fear of anything being done in the back if you act like a dildo. Well, you're, also, you're also seeing that, I don't know, that not age gap, I guess, but that generation gap of, like, you know, wrestlers that are kind of still like from this modern era, but were brought up in the respect, the elders mindset thing, even though that's like something that CM Punk has always said he's like against, you know, he's always been like, you know, the anti, like he wouldn't wear a suit after the Undertaker told him to. And he's like took really big offense to it. And he and he got really pissy with John Cena because John Cena, he felt was talking down to him. So it's funny that Punk is basically just doing the same shit that he would complain about. Did I just break up that entire time? No, you're right. I'm I'm just um I'm typing something. Uh there we go. I had to fix something. Uh but no, no, you're right. And and it's just one of these things where uh we ne- I don't know if we we never seen see that's the thing is we're comparing it to the back in the day and all these other things, but we never really have seen a time like this. We've never seen a time where a renegade guy who doesn't want to listen to it, well and real quickly, you said that this has happened before in time. 
I mean, you just think about Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, dude. You think about Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Think about it, that story came out today. Like, there's some kind of beef in the locker room, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, and they had a hair-pulling thing, right? We, we'd be sitting here so making fun did. of it. Like, they, they, they pulled each other's hair, like a couple of girls. Like, that's what we'd be sitting here saying. And, but, th- but then they would go out and wrestle, so the steam would be blown off. We would all get what we want out of being upset and angry and interested in Bret Hart hating Shawn Michaels and Michaels having problems with Bret. We would all get what we want because we're going to see that match and we're going to see them interact in the ring and say stuff. And all that stuff they did yeah. in the ring, promos. And Bret, remember when Shawn super kicked Bret in the wheelchair thing off the air and, and other stuff uh, that yeah, happened? Like, it's like, like dude, even when they weren't. Even if they weren't, because I think 97, they only faced once or twice. Like, once was in a triple threat match, and the other was at Survivor Series. But even when they weren't wrestling, during their, like, the highest point where their wrestling, fucking feud was bro. at, like, the, the top Are, thing, did you just they do were Vince, cutting promo. Did you just oh, do sorry. Vince Russo, bro? Wrestling. I add syllables to every word, bro. Wrestling. I didn't wrestling. <laughs> hey, yo, bro, I think what we're going to do, bro is we're going to have a reboot of WCW, bro, and we're going to just strip everybody of the titles and hold 600 tournaments, bro. What a fucking idiot. A small genius cog in a wheel that doesn't fucking turn if he doesn't have somebody there hugging him. Go ahead. Yeah, like, yeah, like ruined the fucking uh, WCW women's division. Re- re- you bring it back with no belt. <laughs> like, what a fucking moron. Yeah. Um, when he no, was re- yeah. re- reincarnated, God brought him into the world with no brain. So go ahead. But anyway, yeah, so... Sean and, and Brett, when they were at the highest of their feud, like the hottest their feud ever been, you know, the boiling point, they right. were literally cutting birthday. promos on each other so every week, became... every oh. week. Oh, no. And, I'm sorry. Dork Knight just um, became a member. There's Dork. We're making fun of him earlier. Oh my. Yeah. You should do that on your show. Rightfully so. Did your daughter um, make the uh, NFL cut day? Oh, my God. <laughs> one of them made the one. Oh, boy. And we- <laughs> okay, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Luke. Uh, Dork Knight, thanks for being a member. Dorky pants. Well, no, you basically, yeah, you get what I'm saying. But yeah, Sean and Brett during 97 hated each other's guts, but they were in a segment with each other every fucking week cutting a promo. Uh, and it was a scathing promo here and a scathing promo there. And then when they did wrestle, even though it wasn't often in 97, only twice, it fucking felt important. And it's like it goes to show you if those two, the most egotistical guys in the business, possibly, could go and fucking wrestle each other and could cut promos on each other when they had legitimate beef with each other, then why can't Punk do it? Why can't the Elite do it? Why can't Jack Perry do it? Why do they all have to hide now? Why when things happen like this is everybody hiding everywhere? Do you know what I mean? Like, what is going on? And is it because of the religious aspects of, the, of everything? You know? What? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you know, like like the liabilities. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, no. Well, you know, like Shawn Michaels, I think, is a Christian. Bret Hart is a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Young Bucks. The Young Bucks are Christians, right? But, you know, oh, like they, they, they'll fight people and then they'll probably go out and work about it. But, you know, punk is, punk is, is you know, and Jewish punk is an atheist. Punk is punk is no. Is he? Yeah, he said it a while back. It's even on his. Like, but you know what he real. Stuff. But you know what I mean? You don't really ever get the, you know, synagogue out of the. No, you know. no. <laughs> 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 hey, I have a question. <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm just saying, you no. know, I'm just saying, you know, no. every you got to be careful around punk because let's see if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I mean, maybe he doesn't practice the book. Like I'm just uh, saying, but he I'm just saying punk could sue books. punk could sue somebody is all I'm saying. Maybe they're worried about that. Maybe that's why with Sean, all these other people could do this stuff and work still, but with Punk, they're worried about, you know, legal stuff. Hey, do you remember when The Miz put Punk over on his own DVD? Like, on Miz, on Punk's DVD, The Miz is being interviewed, and he's, like, talking so much great shit about Punk. And then Punk, on his same DVD, shits all over The Miz because he got the main event WrestleMania. And he's yeah. Like, <laughs> he did not deserve that. I deserve that. And, like, literally... 
every time Miz talks about Punk, it's always something positive and like, yeah, I really, I think the guy, you know, even though you could say what you want about the guy, but I respect the hell out of him for going to the UFC. And then here's what Punk has to say about the Miz. Go suck a blood-covered dick, you fucking homo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you fucking dork. By the way, that, that CM Punk DVD thing or whatever, that was around, that was one of the last really good, one of the last really good, like, biography things on a wrestler WWE did. Like, there was a couple after it, like Triple H's and a few other ones after it, but because they, they were on a roll at one point with those, probably from, like, Probably from like 2004 to like 2000, whatever that one was. What was it, 2013 or something? That 2000, yeah, that was like during while Punk just turned heel. Yeah, that was one so of those funny. last good ones. When I was a little kid watching that DVD, I was like so weird. I'm like, because they're presenting Punk as he as if he's the face, but at that time he was a heel, and I'm like. Yeah, the re- he's gonna fucking stab us in the back later. Because <laughs> I was still a mark, <laughs> even though they were exposing it was all fake, you know. <laughs> Mickey Gall yeah, I think. Um, fake. no, I think that uh, punk. Uh, fuck. What was I gonna say? I think the punk. Um, I don't even know. I fuck. I lost it. I don't know why. Um, but I miss. I miss wrestler DVDs. You know, I really miss yeah. just going to the store and buying them and buying like a big box set mm. with like all these like st- like I remember uh, getting the um, what was my first wrestling DVD I ever got was the Hell in a Cell collection. Mm. You know, and the, I think the first match on that yeah was Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker. And, you know, like, I just miss being able to go to the store, find some random DVD case or whatever, and then you would get you get all these random-ass matches that introduce you to different time periods of wrestling that yeah. I just don't think the network does now because no. there's so much, but you don't even know what you're looking for, you know? Yeah, that's the problem, dude. That's like YouTube. That's like how, you know, back in the day you'd watch MTV or a late-night music show, even on local cable access or whatever, and you'd find and discover music and different music videos and things, and that's how you discovered some of your favorite music. But nowadays, there's no YouTube thing that's going to tell you that. I mean, there might be some shows out there I don't know about on YouTube music shows. I'm sure there are. But I mean, like, for, maybe now there is because there's so many shows people are doing music shows. But for a while on YouTube, you just got to search and hope you found something on your own. You know, like you were looking through a record store, but there was no show that could pump out all Yeah, this like stuff. if I had grown up, if I had started watching... Because I started watching around 2010. If I had started watching only like six years ago or something, I wouldn't have been able to get into all this shit, you know, like all the um, old stuff. Because, yeah, I had access to the Internet, but at the same time, you know, the more access you have to things, the more you're like, well, I'll put it off and I'll watch it later. And then you never do. You know, I you never know what, watch anything. You know what WWE has dropped the ball on? Um, you know, guys like 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 wrestling YouTubers, right? Like WWE should be paying paying wrestling YouTubers um all across the board. Um you know, looking for guys with the biggest audiences, right? I'm talking about big audience. And find those people. Like let's say like re- like let's say um you know, wrestling regret, right? That guy uh, Brian that I, I you know, invited me to the thing, we were friends for a while, we did stuff. Um that now he, he would literally stab his friend in the back <laughs> if it means a rainbow flag will hug him. Um, but it's it's like that guy, say he was doing a review of a show. Like if I was WWE, I'd be paying these people to do like a top five of this or like to to talk about a show they saw for 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever. Because what happens is, and this has already been proven, um, it happened with Bruce Pritchard's show, actually. Let's use Bruce Pritchard's show as, as a good example. Bruce Pritchard and Conrad would do a, a, a review of, hey, remember Hell in a Cell? Like you say you just mentioned, uh, let's say, Ground Zero or something like that. And they would do a, like, a whole breakdown of that time period in that match. And maybe the podcast was an hour long. Well, people were so you know into the, the review of it and what was going down at that time that after they heard the podcast that was great with Conrad and Bruce, they would go to the network and then watch the show. And what happened was the fucking network numbers were going through the roof on these certain episodes, and WWE couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And then finally they figured out it correlated with fucking Bruce's podcast with Conrad. So when these guys did a podcast, like it would get 50,000 to 100,000 views or whatever it was, 
And then those people throughout the week would be going to look for that event or that time period. And that's why WWE then brought Bruce Pritchard, um, his, the show, onto the network, which is kind of weird because that's like, okay, I mean, that does make sense, but it didn't do as well as they thought. But still, when the guy talks about events or things, people go looking for them. And I feel like right now, you know, nobody nobody's reviews are blowing the numbers out of the water. But if WWE wanted to do a coordinated effort, um, I think it'd be good of them to reach out to multiple people, maybe like 15, 20, 30, 40 creators. And they said, hey, man, you know, we'd like you to uh, talk about, like do a retro review of um, anything you want and blah, 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 pick it out or whatever. And then just go to everybody and start trying to fund that the, to get everyone to do it if they don't do it. Like, like so many people don't do them or do them once in a while. Do you know what I mean? But WWE could literally say, like, hey, we'd like you to do one a week or one or one a month, the, whatever. You know, because that would that would that would make people go, fuck, I got to go pull up Peacock, you know, I mean, I'm going to go download that. that app. Remember that chick that they were using that they allowed to use their content, Loopy or Lupa or something? Loogie. Yeah, Lupus. Loogie. I called her Lupus. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. she was a kid. <laughs> so I, they I feel like they have tried things like that but maybe not to the scale that you're talking about where it's like all the creators talk about this topic or whatever you know yeah I, I she was called she was called loogie because after she would take big loads she would always like hawk a huge loogie afterwards oh, my God. oh. Like, yeah she was enraging bro and then um oh yeah and it sucks you... too this was every video from her oh what the fuck oh my god is it seth rollins seth rollins is coming down to the ring oh my god gene ambrose Oh my God, Dean Ambrose just hit the dirty deeds! Oh yeah. my God, dude, Dean Ambrose just won the match. Yeah, dude, the biggest <laughs> the biggest retard people get pushed by these comments. It's like, what is this? You're adding nothing, but that's what they want because if you have an opinion, you could hurt their feelings. So, well, dude, that's what they tried. They tried that with me. They literally tried that with me. I mean, they were like, I mean, think about that. The WWE. I mean, you could have done it too. I mean, you would have done it. The, the, I mean, they said it without saying it. You know what I'm saying? Like they basically said it. They were like, "Hey, you know, we'll do this for you, and and you know, you know, just hey, hope 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 you say good things, you know, sort of thing. Like, hey, you know, play, hey, I will rub your back, you know, yeah. you rub mine. Like that was all. That's the was stuff that was all said to me, in in a sense. And it's like, okay, so take basically take it easy on us, and here and come. What's up? You're in the family. Come, but just take it easy, and you'll be in the family. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I, 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 there's a reason I don't get tickets now. Like, and there's a reason all kinds of other things. It's like because I couldn't do it. You I could have been a made man. I, you could have been a made. I, I, I like. I mean, like, dude, I've literally got the DMs still. Like, I looked at them the other day. I was laughing. I was like, ah, that's funny. I would never share them or put them out there. But it's like some of the stuff that was said. It's like basically like be good to us like here you go and so it's like it's just funny man but i couldn't i can't do it i'm too fucking crazy to to like to be like that was not that bad really guys that was actually really cool in fact i'm just gonna you know i can't do it i can't it would be so fake i wouldn't no one would believe it i don't think look fake is what they want and maybe that's why they haven't hired you for commentary well i, but can, I don't know if i can do it on AEW. air do it fake oh, yeah, on air. Yeah, true. I can do it. I can do anything fake on air. Plus, yeah, you're you know, paying. You're paying your or whatever. That will. That's all. There's so many reasons why that won't happen. There's just so many reasons why it won't happen. Um, well, but, yeah, Joe. Joe, pretty much at this point, like you can't. You know, <laughs> like there's there's literally clips yeah. of him being like, "I want to suck a dick in front of a China family." <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like it, obviously, a it's black not, dick. Obviously, I mean, like you, I could like I, I'm not even gonna go into it again. But the bottom line is, we I could. You know, I could be somebody. I could be myself. I was a character, which you know, people say people kill people in movies, and then they're on TV. It's not they didn't really kill anybody. Just like right. this might be a character or an act, you know. So it's it's really not that hard to explain away. Excalibur called someone the N word and all kinds of other stuff. I mean, like you know, it's not that. Well, yeah, but he I, can't. He's he's slightly say. Hispanic. Right, but like I just I don't know, dude. I it can be done if you really wanted to hire me. It could be done, but the bottom line that's is that's how I got away with it. That's how I got away with it. I that's like, right. Well, you're, off. you're half a minority, but um, I gotta go to bed. Good night. <laughs> you like how I end the show abruptly? That was fucking hilarious. 
Um, everybody, I got to end the show. I got to get out of here. We'll, we could, we'll be here all night talking, baby. Rojas! Love you all so much. Thank you so much. I'm Joe Cronin, uh, the, the miserable failure uh, from, um, from my house to your house. I hope you all have a good night. I am going to go cry myself to sleep. And um, I can't believe this poll tonight is the worst poll we've ever had for AEW. This is the worst rating that AEW has ever received. I'm completely shocked by it. I did not expect it whatsoever. And coming to you live from my basement, my office, that I built myself because of this YouTube channel, I'm Joe Cronin, and everybody else around the world loves my semen. Thank you so much, and good night. I can't believe it. One of the worst ratings I've ever seen for AEW in the history of this in the whole entire show. This is crazy. Please hit the like button on the way out. And if you really want to support me, uh, patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And uh, help me pay my $800 electric bill. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. And I love you guys so much that I'm hard. By the way, I saw Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny since I was able to watch it for free uh, earlier. It's like 30 minutes too long. It's, um, it's a little bit bland at times. It's a little bit repetitive. It's a little bit jarring because of the uh, the, uh, the CGI they did and the, the face thing. with, But but it also looks awesome, too. Um, and I would say that if you watch the first 20 minutes of, the, of it and then you just kind of, like, fast forward to the... And then you watch the opening right after that for a second, then the middle of it for a second, and then you just fast forward to pretty much the end of the movie and just watch that, it's like you kind of get the gist of it. I feel like the movie could have been... 30 minutes shorter but been much better it could have been much better and there are a couple of times where the woman uh whatever her name is that's in the movie is just fucking she's so obnoxious you want to just oh my god you want to see her killed like and you don't get that you don't get that so i'm not gonna spoil it but yeah, watch it for free or something. I don't know. It, it's like it's like pretty good, but then the woman is so annoying that you hate you like want to hurt her. But then there are uh, other times where she's okay. And then, but I thought the stuff about Harrison Ford or or about Indiana Jones being older. That didn't really bother me as much. I feel like people blew that more out of proportion that, like, oh, he's old and sad or whatever. Eh, a little bit he was, and, I, you know, it didn't quite feel right either. Like, it was just something that was slightly, like, it just wasn't quite, didn't quite feel right. But it was, there was a bit of a charm to it, too. It's really weird, man. It's one of the weirdest movies it's definitely one of the weirdest things I've ever seen, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. One of the weirdest movies I've ever seen. I, I, I honestly think I like I like Crystal Skull better. Like, I would give... I think I would give Raiders of the Lost Ark... I think Raiders of the Lost Ark is probably, in the end, my probably my favorite, but I don't know. I'd probably give Raiders like a 9 out of 10... I'd probably give this... I think I like the second movie maybe even as good or better. I don't know. I really like the Temple of Doom. People don't like Temple of Doom. I, I like Temple of Doom. I almost think they all have the same rating because the Sean Connery, the Crusade is really cool too. I'd say that's maybe a half a step back. So maybe that's an 8 out of 10. The other two are 8.5s. I would say Crystal Skull is a 7. And I'd say this one's a 6. So if I had to, like, try to panic and give you a rating, I would say, like, Raiders of the Lost Ark, 8.5. Temple of Doom, 8.5 or 9. I'll maybe give those a 9. I love them so much. I don't know. But I'll give them an 8.5. And then Last Crusade's an 8 out of 10 or something. And then 
Crystal Skull is a 7 out of 10. And then the Dial of Destiny is like a 6 out of 10. There you go. So for all the people that didn't see it or wanted to see it, there you go. Um, it didn't destroy the character for me, but it, it didn't make me feel great about the character either. You know, it, it's, it's like watching Picard in season one and two of Star Trek Picard. I'm like, man, this is what happens to him? I don't know. So I'll just never watch seasons one and two, and I'll watch season three again. Anyway, r random, but I figured I'd throw this out there. Talk to you guys later. See you tomorrow. Or see you. No, I won't see you tomorrow. See you Friday.